If you watched the video on my CB500 build, you know that this BMW K100 has been lurking around in the background. And this is actually the second video on this bike. The third, of course, will be the full build. However, I really wanted to focus in this video on the front end conversion, because I kid you not, this was the absolute best upgrade I could have done to this motorcycle. The bike itself I've ridden for pretty much a season and a half. And that first season was with the stock front suspension. And I really didn't think it would make as significant of a difference in the ride as it actually has. For a long time, I felt like when I was diving too deep into a corner that the front wheel almost felt like it was falling out from underneath me. And a lot of that had to do with, I guess, my history on sport bikes versus cafe racers. There's a lot of amazing kits out there for this conversion. The product that I went with, which is from Jack's Garage, really is a step above the rest. They sent me all the materials I needed to be able to do this front end conversion. And that was after doing a lot of research on other options that I had access to and realizing that the kit that they offer is a lot better thought out than most of the others that are on the market, as well as being really just flexible in the way you can have this set up. I mean, the easy things are of course what finish you want, but there's even special mounts designed for a majority of the Moto Gadget speedometers on the market. One of the key things I wanted to maintain was that stock front wheel on the K100. And one of the coolest products that they make is this kit that allows you to convert that front wheel to a dual disc and mount it with the fork conversion. I haven't seen this anywhere else and it is absolutely an unreal product. And this is where I started on the conversion. The front wheel and the fork conversion was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I planned about a day to do the work that was required and the actual setting up of the front wheel and changing out of the forks probably only took me a few hours. Of course, it's the bleeding of the brakes, the rewiring of the handlebars. That is what took a little bit more time. Starting with the rotor adapter kit, there are two plates that get mounted on each side of the wheel. These plates are what the disc brakes will get mounted to, but they also have a retainer ring that of course just adds that extra support to the rotor. The retaining rings do need to be removed before you add the inner plates, and this works with all the stock hardware, which is pretty sweet because it's a very plug and play system, as I've mentioned earlier. Once I had everything snugged up, I did reference the manual just to make sure that I was using the right torque specs on these bolts which in my case was 21 foot pounds. As I mentioned, Jack Scratch did send me these parts to be able to do this upgrade to my K100. And I do wanna say thanks for that. They also gave me a discount coupon that I'm able to pass on to you. I've included that in the link below and you can use that coupon at checkout when you purchase your front end conversion to save a bit of money on this amazing upgrade. For sure, take the time to go through the instructions while you're going through this installation. Full transparency, I did miss a couple things in the installation of the front wheel. And if I would have read through the instructions, I would have noticed things like, for instance, the proper spacer to use on the axle when installing the brake discs. With the wheel together, I moved on to removing the stock forks and triple tree. If you are doing this as an upgrade like I was, definitely I suggest taking off all of your controls as well as your headlight all in one shot. I ended up doing this in different steps, which in retrospect, I should have just stripped the whole front end down. Now, of course, if you're building this bike from scratch all the way from the frame up, you'll probably not have to worry about this and you'll probably put it together in one shot. I would also recommend taking the time to find the socket that actually works on that head bolt as opposed to using a giant crescent wrench. I would suggest replacing the bearings. The kit does come with new bearings. However, the taper bearings that I'm using were replaced just last year. So I did reuse those and I'll save the extra set that the kit came with for a later build or for future maintenance. After making some adjustments to the bottom part of the triple tree, all you really need to do is add the stem bolt, which this is an absolute beautiful piece that Jack sells for a head stem uh, to hold the top half in place. I will say, make sure you torque that down because they do have a tendency to fly off as you're driving down the highway when uh, they're not torqued to spec. Ask me how I know that. One of the things that I really spent 
an unfortunate amount of time on was taking these forks on and off as I was adjusting to find the exact right position for the headlight bucket. I had brackets that I thought would work perfectly for this. However, I was quite wrong and I ended up using three different kits that I had from other things, plus some 3D printed parts to make the headlight fit just the right way. Uh, Jax does have an amazing kit that you can buy separately. However, I didn't order one of those and for sure on the next build, I'll just take the easy way out and order one of those kits. Putting in the axle, we did struggle with this a little bit. And as I said, that is because I didn't read the instructions properly. In the instructions, it tells you exactly which spacer you need to use based on whatever forks you're using. So make sure you reference that with your conversion. With the axle and all the axle claps tightened, I installed the handlebars so I was able to turn the wheel and make sure that I had my stops adjusted properly on the front forks. Now I wish I would have done something about this with the stock forks cause I have a bunch of dents on the gas tank from the triple tree just because we relocated the positioning of the gas tank which I'll show more of that in the actual full build video for this bike. With everything done on the forks, I moved on to mounting and bleeding the brakes. This is a massive upgrade that I really actually didn't consider as much, but the stopping power that I get with the brakes, especially when they stay on. And then I could move on to the fiasco of trying to mount the headlight. Like I said, I was not, I guess, super impressed with how it sat with the brackets that I had. So I went through a couple iterations of this. And I think kind of in this part, you'll see that I'm just adding the turn signals. And the turn signals that I use are really close to the headlights, so I kind of had to take that into consideration while I was mounting everything. Jax also sells these amazing Moto Gadget speedometer mounts, and these are incorporated into the top half of the triple tree, which is pretty cool. And I kind of went about the process of trying to design my own off of the bracket that they had. The version of the Moto Gadget speedo that I have, they don't offer a bracket for that, but I thought this was a great opportunity just to try some of my fabric coppering skills. And my first idea was to make a bracket that would really mount the headlight and hold the speedometer all in kind of one incorporated bracket. And I went about doing that out of metal just to try and, well, see if there was an option that made sense. And after a bit of playing around, I realized uh, what I built was garbage. So I actually ended up going back to some other mounts that I had and I just 3D printed a bracket. And I based this 100% on the bracket that Jax offers. I know this isn't a permanent solution though. 3D print parts do work, but this does have some flex to it. It's PETG, which is more designed for outdoors. And I did, as you can see, have to reprint the final version of it with 100% infill because it did actually snap while I was riding because I didn't do enough infill. And it's definitely something that I'll continue to iterate a little bit. If you have more questions about this bracket though, for sure let me know in the comments comments. The version of the headlight mount I'm not super happy with. I, I'm going to play around with this one a little bit more as well. I think it sticks out too far. But the thing I needed to move on to was rewiring the Mo button. And here's a little trick about soldering. When you put your wires together, especially with these little ones, force your wires together and just give them a bit of a twist. That way they, they're grabbing onto each other a little bit more before you actually start soldering. I think... I saw someone else do this, so I can't fully take credit, but I'm not sure who that was. Over the years, I've actually started using flux as well when I solder, which, I mean, that is something that's probably obvious to some people, but I don't know why I never did. And the, the flux just really gives you the ability to help the solder flow a little bit better. I'll go into a little bit more detail in the full video about rewiring the handlebars and how I use the Moto Gadget Mo button. So watch out for that video, hopefully over the next few weeks. With the front end back together though, I could install the bolt dress up kit from Jax. And this is just a really neat, simple piece that covers up a lot of the stock bolts that otherwise just look like old bolts. And with that, the bike was basically done. The front end conversion looks amazing. And like I said, the performance is absolutely unreal. Huge shout out again to Jax for helping me with the parts for this build and supporting content creation like this. Again, there is a discount coupon below that you can check out when you're ready to do your front end conversion. 
I've always intended this to be the, I guess, the 2.0 version of the K100 doing the front end, and I'm so glad that I jumped to it as quick as I did. There's still lots that I want to do to this bike, and I'll talk about that more again in the next video. But in the meantime, here's some other videos that you might enjoy.